Welcome! It's Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I am the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics and we are here at Patchwork Plus in Dayton, Virginia. We are doing our summer shorts. So we are back this week and we are talking all about pinning. So that's what we're going to focus on today because pinning is, will make it, pinning is what will make it so much easier to work with cuddle fabrics. Okay, so when you're sewing it, the pinning we do this thing called double pinning that I'm going to show you today. And once you try it, it is a game changer. All right. So before we get too far, make sure that you share the video. We'll give away a kit at the end and uh, we'll have a lucky winner that we will announce. Very exciting. So share the video on Facebook and uh, let your friends, your sewing groups, all that good stuff. Let them know about Sew Together Tuesday. All right. Okay. Pins. Let's talk about them. Right. So. One of the things that I've talked about that I love about my job, there's a lot of things, but one of them is that I get to try out a whole bunch of different products and see which work best for cuddle. So the thing that I have found is that clover pins work best for cuddle and it's not just clover pins in general. There's a very specific kind of clover pin, okay? So they make a ton of different pins and if you didn't realize, there are pins for all sorts of different things. There's silk pins and applique pins and patchwork pins and there's double fork pins and all sorts of things. But the one I like best are these guys and they are just called flower head pins. This is the box set, okay? So can you see that okay? Is it reflecting We're very badly? Okay. okay, so the thing that I want to point out about this is the 54 is how long the pins are and the 0.7 is how thick the shaft, is that what you call it? Mm -hmm. um, how thick this is. So there are variations in the pins and you'll once you know what these numbers mean, you can look at the pin package and see which ones you want. What you want is a thicker pin basically because it'll go through the cuddle better. So I have a few of their pins here that I wanna show you. So I've got, so here is their lightweight pin and we did a show with them back Oh, January. January. Um, yeah, where we talked all about the pins, there's a ton of information in there. But the ones that I have tended to use come in a card and they have this blue one, which is for lightweight. This red and salmon kind of one for medium weight. And then, is that the right one? Yep. These guys are for the heavyweight. And these are the solid co colors and they come with the yellow, the white, the uh, lime or mint, I guess and the peach, okay? So it's those four colors, that box right there. Right there, okay? and those are the thickest ones. <laughs> those are the heavyweights, all, all right. right? So and these are the ones that I like the best for cuddle. If you can find these, these will work just fine. Um, the other ones are a little bit better. These are not the ones you want. So put these back if you're buying it for cuddle. If you're buying these because you're doing some apparel sewing and you're working with lawn or that sort of thing, these are perfect and I'll show you why. It's because they're really thin. So they got a lot of bend in them, okay? So they will bend really nicely, which means they'll go through fine fabrics and not pierce big holes in them. The medium ones have a little, a little less. You can see they're still a little bendy. Okay, but these, these work decent for a couple layers of cuddle. If you're using thick cuddles or a lot of layers, oh, here we go, then you want this heavyweight one. And you can see that one doesn't really bend at all. Okay, so these, and it really has to do with how thick this shaft is because it can't bend, all right, which is great. So look at this one, no bending. This one, crazy bending, all right. But it does mostly spring back. It mostly springs back, but they will just bend. Okay, got it. Hey, look at that. Trash. So then it's trash, okay? <laughs> so this is what will happen if you're trying to go through thick fabrics with this pin is it will just bend and that's frustrating and you're not gonna be able to get it back up and through. So I'm gonna show you um, basically how I pin, but I wanna compare these two just really quick to show you. So if I am pinning through, I need to put them up here so I can see them. And actually I'm gonna grab, so this doesn't confuse you or me, I'm gonna grab a yellow one and the one that is the medium weight, okay? So heavy duty, heavy weight, medium weight, all right? So this one, I can get it to come through, and this is, I kind of have to push it, push it down and get that to pop back up, all right? When I do this, they'll just pop back up. So this one, I can't get it to come back through because it wants to bend a little, so I always have to do this where I push it down. This guy will just come back. 
Got All right, it. so it, really the, the heavier weight is really good for using the, um, with two or, or more. With this, you can absolutely get it through. It gets a little bit harder if you wanted to do four layers, say. It's a lot harder to get it up, and I could still push that right back up. Oh, All right, wow, so that. it's just a difference in the, um, the kind of the heavy dutiness of this, and this doesn't bend when I push it in and back up. So that's what, that's what that is. If we tried this with the blue one, let's see what's happened. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> it did not work at all. Oh, Can't yeah. get it to do it. So that's why I highly recommend these pins. All right, so when you come to classes with me, that's what we'll always talk about is getting the box pin. So that's what I've got in my pin cushion today, and I'm going to talk to you or show you how to pin with cuddle to get it to do what you want it to do. So we've got a couple of variations here. So this is two Luxes together, two Lux cuddles, and this is a digital excuse me, a digital print and a Lux Cuddle print, or just a Lux Cuddle. So we have two very different thicknesses here, which is what makes it a little bit harder for people to pin them together. All right, so let's start with the easier one, which is the two Lux Cuddles. All right, and this is be something that you would pin these together if you were doing a Lux Throw or a pillowcase or if you were doing strips on your um, strip quilt. Okay, so one of the things that I do is I want to pin the end. And I will often pin, when I want something to stay exactly where I want it, where it, where it is, I'll pin it perpendicular. Sometimes the corners, I'll pin it in like this, and that makes it stay a little bit better at corners, all right? So this one has a little bit more movement over here because it can slide past the pin. So here it cannot because the way it's pinned in, all right? Okay. So just two different ways of doing it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin in the middle. And I wanna make sure that my raw edges are, are what's together, the backing. I wanna make sure the backing matches and not necessarily the fluff. I don't really care about the fluff, I just care about the backing. And I'm gonna pin parallel to this raw edge. And what this does is it holds it nice and flat. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here, make sure that it's nice and even. You can kind of hold it, pinch it, poke it through. But you don't want to pick it up and move it around a whole bunch, You don't right? want to pick it up and move it too much. So if I can kind of te test it and see if it's straight, I can kind of hold it there and then pin it. So you're going to do this the whole way. So whenever, and this is just a small section, but what I like to do is an end, an end, the middle, and then in between. All right? So if this were a longer one, so say this was uh, much longer, right? And this was the two, I would do an end, an end, the middle, then I would divide that in half, and then divide that in half, and that in half, and I just keep getting smaller. So when you're doing a 60 inch wide blanket, that's how you do it, one end, the other end, in between, and then just keep dividing it up, all right? So we have, so the first thing we're gonna do is pin parallel to the raw edge. So this is a little bit different than you would normally do. And the reason I do it this way is because it will hold this whole thing flatter. When I first started doing this, I put that pin away and just use the heavier ones. I pinned it the way that I pinned most things, which was perpendicular to this edge. What happens when you do that is that this starts to shove forward. And that happens quite a lot, even if you're using a walking foot and being careful, it'll start to shove forward. Well, if that shoves forward and then I just keep shoving forward, that shove gets bigger and bigger, okay? And that's if I'm not even pushing too hard and not really stretching it. So you want to be careful and not let that happen. So what I've realized is that if I pinned this direction, I couldn't get it to shove really, all right? So that was sort of the idea there was to pin parallel so that I couldn't get it to move too much. Then what I realize is when I'm sewing and I start to sew along here, I still have to take this pin out and then I have all this wiggle room. So. Now we do this thing called double pinning, where we pin a second row down here. This is the part that's really the game changer and makes a big difference in how you're sewing. So we're gonna sew right along here. These pins will come out, these pins will stay, and it will hold everything in place. And what's the seam allowance you normally sew cuddle? at? And that's sort of important about like the spacing. It right? is, so we normally do it at a half an inch seam allowance get that straighter because it's annoying me. So some people, so when you're sewing, it's gonna end up about here. So really my pins kind of go in just about where my seam allowance is going to be and that's just my preference for it. I do know some people will pin closer to the edge so that they can sew between the pins a little bit, but I don't really, 
I don't really recommend it, and definitely a half an inch seam allowance, so you have right. some extra space. And then that okay. second row has to be outside of your walking foot. Has to be outside the walking foot, and generally it's about an inch away from this edge, okay? So one of the things that people will sometimes do is that they'll pin way over here on that second row. And then what happens is when you're coming along here and you take this out, you still have a lot more wiggle mm. than if you pin closer, okay? So if I pin up here and I pin up here, and then I take this out. I really don't have the wiggle. I can't get it. All right, so that's what that really is doing, is kind of controlling that. So there's one. Now I'm gonna show you with, we're gonna, we're gonna pin both of them, then we'll sew both of them. We'll show the difference. So this one is with, you remember the digital cuddle? Super cute. And then this is the Lux cuddle. So, oh, I don't remember what this animal print is called. We'll figure it out. Um, and this one is called Hide. That's hide truffle, that's what we made the monkey out of. Oh, got it. was pretty cute, that little monkey. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing here where I'm going to pin an end, and then I'm gonna pin an end, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pin in between. And when I'm pinning, I always pin just one side at a time. So I know some people like to pin, like if you were doing a, this were gonna be, say, a pillow, then they would wanna pin all four sides. Same with throws, and I don't. I pin one side at a time just so I can control it, and that way I can use more pins on each side. You're, there's also a specific direction that you're pinning as well. Oh, yes. So this is important. So I'm right-handed. I'm pinning further away from me. I'm pinning this direction. As I'm going to sew, it's going to come this way, and I'm going to take the pins out as I go. If I were left-handed, I would want to pin this direction so the same thing would happen and they would come out okay so really important to try to put your pins in so that they'll be easy to take out the easiest way of doing it for me is to put it so it's further away whatever side i'm pinning is further away from me so that i have to pin this way okay all right so you're going to come on around and we'll we'll sew just a little bit the other thing that i've got here so i'm using my tools or my my pins as tools to keep the fabric where I want it to be. The other thing I'm gonna use is my stiletto that I love so much, okay? It's the By Annie Stiletto. Uh, precision stiletto and pressing, pressing tool. tool. There we go. <laughs> the big names. Uh, so this is a great tool though, and I really love it. So this long point that it has here, it is sandblasted. Yeah, sandblasted, so it has a little bit of grip on it, and we'll show you how I use that. It has a really nice strong point that I can use it to help guide the fabric. So we're gonna do the Lux Cuddle first, because it's two fabrics together, and two fabrics that are the same are going to work together easier than two different fabrics, pretty much always. Doesn't matter the fabric, it's just that way, okay? All right, so I'm gonna start in just a little bit. What stitch are we using? I'm just gonna use a straight stitch here, and I've got it at a 3.5 stitch length, okay? So we're just gonna do a straight stitch all the way across. So like I said, this would be something you would do for a throw or for a pillow, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go backward first, come off the edge, get that nice and secure. And then basically, so on my foot, I'm using the digital dual feed on my baby lock. And it is kind of has a, we'll talk about this in, a, in another summer short where we talk about the walking foot and ways that you can do it. This has a little, what do you call that? I always forget. Like a conveyor belt almost. A belt. So it has yeah. a little belt here that drags the fabric through. And I wanna put it on there first, kind of back it up and go forward. Um, so that's what we're doing there okay and i've got it at about a half an inch seam allowance and i'm just going to drag my way through here so as i'm use as i'm coming through i can use the stiletto here to kind of keep this fabric down as i'm going and help feed it underneath the foot all right i'm just going to leave this pin in because it's not going to get hit as we get closer to this i can see there's a little bump here so i'm just going to press that down get it caught i'll take my pin out and so to the next one all right, so I'm just gonna keep my edge there so I can have about a half inch seam allowance. Make sure that I'm not gonna hit that needle at all or that pin at all until I get up to the next one. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna watch that real carefully. It looks like I'm gonna miss it. We'll see. Yeah, there we go. So that's another reason I like those flower head pins is because they will literally just go right underneath the, uh, the walking foot. So as I get here, this 
I had to um, like unloosen it just a little bit. It was about an eighth of an inch difference right there. That's fine. All right, that will happen sometimes. That's not a big deal. If it's less than a quarter of an inch, you're okay. Because uh, we have a half inch seam allowance. We got some wiggle room. All right, so now make sure and take out all my pins. And I got a lovely little seam. Can we see the back side? See how it went. Okay, went pretty good. It's a little bit wide right there, but you'll never know. All right, then it will flip inside out. There we go. All right, so perfect. So that one is pretty darn easy. Now, if I wanna sew these two together, you can already see that there is some humpiness going on there. Mm -hmm. They're not <laughs> like, playing well with others. They're not playing as other. well <laughs> together. So the two different fabrics will behave differently. So people often ask, which one should I have up on top? I like to have the squirrelier fabric up on top really so I can control it. But if it's too much bigger, I'll want to flip it over. So what I'm, what my recommendation is that you try it this way once, try it the other way the next time. See which one works best for you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, do the same thing, get it all the way underneath the foot, take that pin out, do a little back stitch, and then grab my stiletto and keep moving it forward. So once I get it going and it grabs underneath the foot, I can just kind of keep it moving. All right, go ahead and take my pin out. And I'm gonna again use this to just keep it together and help it feed underneath the foot. The big thing is you wanna make sure that it's not getting underneath the foot enough that you would actually hit it. We don't wanna do that. And we don't wanna, um, you don't wanna stretch this. So this has already got a little, you can see the, yeah, you can see the little push in it just a little bit. So a lot of times what people wanna do is they wanna take this pin out and then they wanna hold this straight. Do not do that, okay? <laughs> we don't wanna pull it. So you wanna leave it where it is, do not pull it. So that's what this stiletto does, is it lets me push this down and keep it right where I want it to be. All right, so I'm just gonna keep going, work my way all the way across. Now, if I start to get, it starts to push a little bit, I'm gonna stop and make sure that I'm really getting it smashed down as it goes under. So you can just, if you sew slower, and just keep um, pushing it down. And I'm not pulling it, I'm not pushing it, I'm just literally holding it flat against the uh, feed dogs as we go through here. Okay, again, I'm gonna take the pins out at the very end, hold that in position, kind of stab through both the front and the back. It's a little back stitch. And we'll see how this is. All right, so there we go. That looks pretty all right. We'll see the back. Okay, so this is the thing that people will start to get start to get a little a little crazy about is that this is a wider seam allowance than right here. Do not worry about that. Okay, as long as it's fairly consistent, it's going to look beautiful from this side. So you can't tell at all that there's any wobbling either side. All right, perfectly fine. So that's it. All right. All right, super easy. So again, make sure that if you're if you're using two different fabrics together, I usually like the digital cuddle on top and the luxe cuddle on the bottom because it's a little more stable. If that's not working very well for you, flip it over and pin it this direction and see if that works any better. All right, what I found is that sometimes if this is on the bottom, it's more likely to pucker and we don't want that to happen. All right, so that double pinning technique is really the key to getting it to stay where you want it to stay as you're sewing. All right, so you wanna make sure that you've got an end and end the middle, subdivide that up and then add your second row. We really want those pins to be pretty close to each other, help it feed the fabric through. You won't have any more of that stretching that kind of can frustrate people when they start sewing with Minky. So there you go, all right, all right. so. Thanks everybody for watching. I appreciate it. We'll have a winner in the comments below. We'll be back again next week for another summer shorts. And uh, yeah, until then, happy sewing.